Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will be reviewing the Niji Max 4 laser engraver with the E8020 watt laser module. As the name suggests, you can expect this to be a large machine. The working area of the Max 4 is 750 by 460 millimeters, which is not only much larger than a standard 400 by 400 millimeter desktop engraver. Furthermore, Niji offers an extension kit for the machine, allowing the work area to be extended to 750 by 1,030 millimeters. To accommodate this size, you would need a tabletop that measures 4 feet by 4 feet. The E80 laser module is a 20 watt module, which is not as powerful as other 30 watt to 40 watt modules you may have seen in the market. However, the Max 4 offers a motorized Z axis, which means that when you attempt to cut thicker materials, you can run multiple passes and lower the laser module with each pass to achieve better cutting results. On their product page, Niji claims that this laser module can last for 20,000 hours, which is longer than regular ones. However, I don't think it's 10 times more durable than regular ones unless you find the worst of the worst in the market to compare it to. Generally, reputable brands like Xtool and Atom Stack claim their modules can last for 10,000 hours, which is still two times shorter. This claim of having a longer lifespan is also reflected in the warranty period, as while most brands offer up to a one-year warranty on the laser module, Niji offers a two-year warranty. In addition, I noticed some unique features that you won't find on other standard desktop engravers. The Max 4 supports wireless engraving through their Bluetooth to serial port bridge software, which allows your Bluetooth to work as a virtual serial port. So, it should be compatible with software like Laser Gerbil and Lightburn. Moreover, you have the option to use a pen or blade instead of the laser module, allowing the machine to draw on paper or cut vinyl sheets. As for air assist, the machine does not come with an air pump, but it does include an air assist nozzle and air tube. Therefore, you will need to have your own air pump or compressor to use air assist while cutting. I would like to thank Niji for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. The overall design of this machine is slightly different from a regular desktop engraver. The X-axis uses a 12mm linear rail, while the Y-axis uses regular palm wheels, and all the stepper motors and electronics are on the gantry. Other than that, we have a power supply, laser module, and various tools and cables. There is also a pen attachment included, enabling you to use the machine for drawing purposes. The assembly takes just a few minutes. You need to construct the frame and place the laser module on the gantry. The provided user manual only has a few pages, but they have all the documentation available online, which I will discuss further later on. The laser module comes with an air assist nozzle, and you'll need to connect your own air pump or compressor to the air tube for it to function properly. Niji also provided me with a honeycomb bed, but it was originally designed for the Niji 3 Max. To ensure better support for the honeycomb bed, I printed a few brackets and attached them at the back. Since I will primarily be using light burn, I will demonstrate how to set up this machine and configure the motorized Z axis. Once the USB cable is connected, Lightburn should be able to detect the machine. Using the default settings should be fine. Select the machine and the corresponding serial port. The machine will then home itself with the homing position located at the top left corner. However, it's important to note that the origin of the machine is actually at the bottom left. Next, I will enable the Z axis by going to Edit, device settings, and checking the Enable Z-axis and Optimize Z-Moves options. Since the focal length of this laser module is 25mm, I will use a 25mm tall 3D printed block to set the lowest point of the module. I will loosen the module and let it drop onto the block. Considering that the Z-axis travel of this machine is 45mm, I will use Lightburn to move the motor down 45mm and then tighten the laser module in place. I will then move it back to the zero position by moving it up 45mm. 
As a result, when I need to work with a 3mm thick material, I can move the z-axis down 42mm to achieve the perfect focal length. Alternatively, I can enable the z-offset in the operation, input 45mm, and set the material height to 3mm, which should do the same thing. Let's start with a simple engraving test to make sure that everything is working properly. This test will be done at a speed of 10,000 mm per minute and will engrave a pattern using different power levels. Since the size of this machine exceeds that of any enclosures I have, I will be using the Vivor 80 watt smoke purifier to maintain indoor air quality. All right, it appears that the machine is operating smoothly and the darkness of the engraving at various power levels appears normal. Now, I will do a more comprehensive power test using Lightburn. I will engrave at speeds ranging from 5,000 to 20,000 mm per minute to see the outcomes of different speeds and power settings. Based on my observations, I believe the best result is still achieved at around 10,000 mm per minute. Increasing the speed beyond this value results in a lighter appearance, so the engraving becomes too faint at higher speeds. Next, I will proceed with some cutting tests on 3mm plywood, varying the speed from 100 to 1000 mm per minute. It appears that this 20 watt laser module is slightly more powerful than the standard 20 watt modules. Typically, I would need to cut 3 mm plywood at 500 mm per minute with a 20 watt module, but with this module, I can cut at 700 mm per minute using 90% and 100% power. Afterward, I will engrave a picture and cut it out. I will use a speed of 10,000 mm per minute and 100% power, resulting in a total job time of approximately 32 minutes. The outcome is satisfactory. Following that, I will cut out the engraved picture at a speed of 500 mm per minute and 100% power. Although the test demonstrated that it could cut at 700 mm per minute with 90% and 100% power, I'd rather make sure it cuts through completely or else I'd have to realign the workpiece for a second pass. The job finished in 45 seconds and the result is quite nice. I will use the same speed and power settings to cut a picture stand. The job finished in 1 minute and 15 seconds. While the stand may be a bit small for the picture, it is still functional. Next, I will try some thick wood cutting, starting with this half inch poplar solid wood. I will use a speed of 100 mm per minute and 100% power. The laser penetrates the wood completely, resulting in a clean cut. Since this machine claims to cut up to 17mm wood, although I don't have that exact thickness, I have a 19mm wood board from Home Depot that I can use for testing. I initially tried cutting at 300 millimeters per minute with 2, 3, and then 4 passes, but without success. Finally, I tried 200 mm per minute with 3 passes, with each pass stepping down 1.5 mm. Thank you. 
it almost cut through on one side, but I still needed to apply a bit of force to separate the pieces. It appears that it can cut depths of up to 17mm with 3 passes at 200ml per minute. Moving on, I will now try using the rotary roller. This roller doesn't come with a riser, so you can use a few wooden blocks or 3D print something to elevate the machine. The roller is the chuck style, so you won't see the usual two rollers at the bottom. I will try to engrave on a baseball. At first, I tried engraving some text, but the settings weren't properly dialed in, resulting in not so great results. Finally, I used a speed of 10,000 mm per minute and 50% power to engrave a logo on it. The outcome looks acceptable and is much better than the previous two attempts. Lastly, Niji also sent me their extension kit, which includes two long aluminum extrusions and longer belts, allowing for an expanded working area of 760 to 1030 millimeters. This is the largest machine I have ever tested. I had to make a makeshift 4x4 foot tabletop using two wooden boards to accommodate it. Since the working area is significantly larger, I couldn't use the smoke purifier and instead moved the machine outside of my garage. I decided to cut a leopard design on a 5mm panel from Home Depot, which only cost $10, to see how the machine performs on this inexpensive piece of plywood. I started with a speed of 500mm per minute and 100% power, continuously adjusting the speed as I noticed some areas couldn't cut through completely due to the inconsistent filling of this cheap plywood. The final result is okay, but since some small pieces didn't cut through entirely, I had to snap them off and accidentally broke one of the legs. However, I was able to create a replacement leg and reconnect it to the leopard. The repair looks decent, and after applying some primer and gold paint, it actually looks pretty good, so I hung it up in my house. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this machine, starting with the pros. 1. The motorized Z-axis is convenient as it eliminates the need for manually adjusting the laser module when working with different materials. Once the Z-offset is properly set, you can just enter the thickness of the material in Lightburn. This feature is also beneficial for cutting. Despite how I didn't expect the 20 watt module to cut solid wood up to 17 millimeters, it managed to cut a 19 millimeter wood piece, reaching a depth of approximately 17 millimeters. Two, all the X, Y, and Z axis stepper motors and limit switches are located on the gantry. This setup makes it very easy to replace the stock aluminum extrusions and use longer belts to extend the machine's capacity. In fact, Niji could even consider implementing a wheel system which would let the entire gantry roll on the material. This way, you can work on materials of unlimited length if you figure out how to manage the power cord. 3. The machine comes with built-in Bluetooth, enabling wireless usage of their computer software and app. Additionally, the machine includes a Bluetooth to serial port bridge software, allowing wireless control of the machine through Lightburn. Now for the cons. 1. This machine is definitely created by a group of people who have extensive knowledge about laser engravers. However, their documentation management is quite messy. Besides their official website, they have three more websites, niji.club, niji.wiki, and niji99.com, which are interconnected and pretty confusing. The machine only comes with a very basic user manual, so you will likely need to search for more information online. Niji.club appears to be an index website that redirects you to the other sites. Niji.wiki contains various user manuals, and Niji99.com seems to be a Q&A site. The form is divided into a new form and an old form, so I have no idea what's going on. I would suggest reorganizing their documentation and making it more accessible. 2. While the app and software have basic functions, the user interface is honestly the worst I have ever seen. So I definitely prefer using Lightburn. I primarily use the software as a firmware tool to update the firmware and act as a bridge to establish a Bluetooth connection that functions as a serial port for Lightburn, but I would not recommend using their software for regular use. Three. 
I can't use the Bluetooth Bridge software on my Windows 11 desktop. I'm using the Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6C adapter with Bluetooth 5.3, so I'm not sure if it's a hardware compatibility issue with the latest Intel Bluetooth 5.3 adapter or not, but it works on the iPhone app and my older laptop running Windows 10. While using the Bluetooth virtual serial port on Windows 10, I experienced error messages in the middle of the job. On the other hand, I never saw any errors while using the USB cable connection. So, even though the Bluetooth virtual serial port does work to some extent, it is not as reliable as the USB cable connection. In my opinion, you still need to connect the power cord and the air tube from the pump, so whether or not you add another USB cable doesn't make a big difference. I would prefer a more reliable connection with a traditional USB cable. In conclusion, this machine has excellent hardware, including the easy to extend frame and motorize the axis, making it probably the most handy desktop diode laser engraver I have ever tested, but just in terms of hardware. Their documentation management and software user interface really needs improvement. If you are an experienced laser engraving user who already has your preferred software, such as Lightburn or Laser Gerbil, and you don't need to rely on their software or documentation, you are going to love this machine because Niji knows how to build hardware that functions well. However, if you are a beginner seeking your first machine, I don't consider this to be a beginner-friendly option. Instead, something like the Xtool D1 Pro would probably be more suitable. Anyways, if you're interested in the Niji Max 4, I included a link in the description. That's all I wanted to share about this machine. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.